working from home with, you know, four different kids, that could be uh, a temptation either way to either work your beach body business when you're at home or, you know, or hang, you know, when, when you're hanging out, you know, you know, building your beach body business, trying to take care of the family. And so it's kind of this <laughs> constant struggle back and forth. Besides that, um, really the nitty gritty and doing the everyday activities, whether you call it the, you know, the, the daily fours or the power of threes or your power hour requires some, um, some leadership and some self leadership. So what I wanted to share is this, you know, is a quick story um, of, of my first foray into entrepreneurship. Um, and it was, so it was in the summer of 2002. I had, um, in the, in the previous summers, I had basically decided to work as many hours as I could possibly work, okay? Because I was self-funding my, my schooling. I had a small scholarship, but it didn't cover everything, so I had to work during the school year and then during the summertime to cover my school. And so that summer in 2002, I came in and I decided, well, you know what? I could work the 18 hour days that I did with three different jobs. Literally each of them was paying $5, $6, and $7 an hour, basically minimum wage, $18 a day, break my back. Or I could listen to what these guys are telling me. And, and I had gone to this um, informational workshop. And I walked in and I remember it was in our student union building uh, and I went in and they had, you know, they had free lunch. And so when you have free lunch and you're a broke college student, you're going, it doesn't matter what they're telling me I'm going. So I went for the free lunch. Little did I know that that experience would literally change my life. That meeting essentially um, opened my eyes to what's possible with entrepreneurship and self-leadership and you know, and, and sales and all that stuff. So I walked in and the meeting was essentially, uh, you know, a lot of different college students that had done uh, summer sales. And they were talking about all these great stories of making a lot of money. You know, I'm talking twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in a summer in four months. So I sat there going, well, I'm a, you know, I'm a smart guy. I can figure things out. Even if I make 5% of what they're talking about, I'll be okay. If I make 10%, I'm going to be, you know, doing cartwheels, you know, in the street if I make, you know, even 10%. And so the, the job was essentially doing door-to-door -door summer sales, selling pest control, okay? So if you've ever had anybody come to your door selling pest control, I was one of those kids. I signed up to do door-to-door -door pest control. Now, here's the thing. I had no idea what I was really getting myself into, right? And if you're honest, when you, were, when you became a beach body coach, when Lisa spoke to you, Jacqueline, or when Jacqueline spoke to you, Jessica, you were like, yeah, it sounds good. I see her working out a couple times. She's drinking this shake. Sounds like a lot of fun, right? And what I saw when I went to that workshop was these kids that are making a lot of money that are, you know, paying off their school and paying off their student loans and just living like living like kings at 20, 21, 22. And I'm going, well, listen, listen, if I make even five, 10 percent again, I'll be OK. So I so I signed up for it. And here I went. And if you remember as a brand new coach, you're probably like an idiot on fire. You're just so excited, but you have no idea really what you're doing. And so, and so here we went, it was a group of 10 of us. And we lived in Idaho at the time, and we got a car, and we drove across the country, and we went to Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're all excited, so excited, right? And of course, as fate would have it, you know, that excitement quickly faded away because now the reality of talking to people and knocking on strangers' doors, 
and getting rejection after rejection after insults after threats after rejection kind of did it stole put you know did it did it did a number on us right a lot of us were just in our 20s 21 22 at most right and so what i want to talk about today is um leadership but i want to talk about leadership as an entrepreneur in good or bad times okay because as an entrepreneur the lure of an entrepreneur is I'm going to control my hours, I'm going to control how much I'm worth, and I'm going to do it on my own terms without anybody telling me what to do. See, it's very easy to sign on the dotted line like I did in that ballroom after having a free lunch. <laughs> it's very easy to say, yes, I'm going to do it. What's harder than making a decision is, I always say, is managing the decision. And so, words are cheap. Words are cheap, okay? So what I want to talk about today is not just leadership. I want to talk about integrity combined with leadership and the concept of self-leadership. See, it's easy to just say stuff. What's harder is to lead yourself and to make agreements with yourself, regardless of what your coach tells you, your, you know, your family tells you, your team tells you, regardless of all that, regardless of what happens, you have to, in order for you to be successful, you have to make a pact, a commitment to yourself. And that is called ethical leadership. That is called leadership with integrity, right? And the integrity starts with you before you even make a commitment to anybody else, okay? So I want to talk about five, five aspects of leadership, okay? I'm going to talk about integrity of your word. I want to talk about integrity of action. Okay. I want to talk about integrity of purpose. I want to talk about integrity of your priorities and then the integrity of character, right? Word, action, purpose, priorities, and character. Okay. And I'm going to illustrate it through kind of my experience getting into this door-to-door -door sales world that I had no clue what it was all about, okay? So here we are. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina, and for two weeks, we had like two sales. There's 10 of us. We had two sales. It was miserable, okay? It was completely miserable, and in the process of those two weeks, we lost two people. So now the group that was at 10 was now down to eight. Here's the first lesson there. Some will and some won't. Some will and some will not, okay? The champions tell themselves, some will, some won't, some won't, so what, who's next, okay? And literally after two weeks, that's what we said. We didn't say who's next, we said what's next. Because this situation here is not working, okay? The second lesson is this. Sometimes your ladder is up against the wrong wall. As a coach, I see coaches try so many different walls all the time. The wall of Instagram, the wall of Facebook, the wall of sneak peeks, the wall of fit clubs, the wall of writing blogs, the, ro the, the wall of Pinterest, you name it, they keep changing all these different walls. And sometimes your, 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 your ladder is up against the wrong wall. It's okay for you to change. What you cannot afford to do is change every single month or every single week. Because what happens is the people that are following you are going to pretty, pretty soon say, you know what, she does not know what she's talking about. She's going all over the place and the story is changing all the time. I don't have time. I've got four kids. I've got another business. I've got, you know, this and that, and I don't have time, right? And so, and so here we are. Um, we decided now to get out of Charlotte, North Carolina. It just wasn't working out. Now we, the group of 10 was down to eight. Okay, so I wanna talk about first the integrity of word. What does that mean, integrity of your word? Your word is gonna be tested. Your commitment is gonna be continually tested, okay? Integrity of word means this. We mean what we say, 
We mean what we say, and people can trust us. Being, see, see, when you're honest, it means you don't have to worry about keeping your story straight, right? I mean, the truth, the truth shall set you free. The truth is enough. And your truth for you as a coach, if you're watching this recording, is you've made a commitment not to Jacqueline, not to the team, but to yourself first. And hopefully you have that integrity of word to yourself. And maybe after that, to your family. And then maybe after that, to your coach or your upline or your team. And it's extremely important to have that integrity of word in terms of leading yourself. That starts there. That's the basis. That's the, you know, that's the foundation. Okay. The second integrity that I talked about is integrity of action. Okay. Integrity of action means your actions match or exceed what you say. Your actions match or exceed what you say. Okay. <laughs> so this is where you get tested. When you've shared your commitment, and now you're going and saying, okay, now the rubber has got to meet the proverbial road, okay? And when you start getting the rejection, like I was getting for two straight weeks, and when you're starting to wonder, maybe I should have taken, you know, that job, paying, you know, those three jobs, really, paying five, six, and seven dollars an hour. That's what I started thinking about. Now, all of a sudden in your head, you start playing these mind games, and if you don't watch out, they're going to take you away, okay? All right, so here we go. We go to, uh, we move across the country now. We failed miserably. So think about it. We're 20, 21-year-olds. All we know is just failure. So our story, our past two weeks, is telling us, you guys are not very good at this stuff, Okay. It had to take some resilience for us to go through this and still be there. And it's proven the group of 10 ended up at eight. So now we're crossing, you know, we're crossing the United States again, okay? And this is not a seeming tour. We're driving all night, okay? We're sleeping very little in the car, okay? And, and we're trying to just, you know, hold butt and try to get there as fast as possible. So guess where we go? We go to Tucson, Arizona, okay? So if you've ever been to Tucson, Arizona, or anywhere in Arizona, Nevada, like any of those two states in the summertime, in like June and July, those are two of the worst months, okay? We're talking like in the shadow, okay, it's 105 degrees. I mean, it's like 105 degrees. And then guess what we're doing? We're outdoors, door-to-door -door sales, right? And you're going out there when the sun is high and it's like shining on you, okay? So here we are. We're in Tucson, Arizona. Now, there's two weeks that are taken out of the summer. Now we only have a month and a half. Okay, in that month and a half, I knew that I needed to hit a certain number. Now, that number was a non-negotiable non number. That's the first time that I learned about goal setting. And the number was $3,000. The $3,000 was to pay for my tuition when I get back, okay? It was exactly $3,000. That was my goal. Like, it's a non-negotiable. Let me tell you why it was a non-negotiable goal. So back then, basically, I was, I was an international student, which had, you know, I, had an, I was an international student after 9-11. After 9-11, things got a little more complicated for anybody that is not a United States of America citizen, okay? It got more complicated. Essentially, you had to pay your school in advance if you're an international student. You had to always maintain a B average in, in class. And if you didn't do that, um, you'd be kicked out of school, okay? If you didn't fulfill one of those, you'd be kicked out of school. Here's what that meant. If you were kicked out of school, um, you didn't have any status in the country, which then meant you were a, uh, essentially an illegal alien if you were not in school. And if you're an illegal alien not in school, you get sent back home, okay? The worst thing that could have happened to me is to be sent back home. And I played this tape in my mind all the time while I was there staring at the sun going, I don't care how bright you're shining. I don't care how hot it is. The worst thing that can ever happen is for me to be sent back home to look at my parents in the eyes and say all that sacrifice, 
all those savings, all the heartache of having your oldest son away from home was for nothing. And here I am with no degree and being sent, sent back. Okay, that was the single worst thing. And that actually scared me more than the $3,000, okay? Like that drove me more than the $3,000. Let me take a pause there. Your back doesn't necessarily have to be against the wall like mine was, okay? You can actually create um, a big enough why, set a goal worthwhile enough that you want to drive for, and I'm, and I'm telling you, just look around your life. There's something in your life right now that can drive you, that needs more of your attention, that needs, you know, whether it's more of your time, more of your investment, there's something there that doesn't necessarily maybe put you, be, you know, behind, you know, between a rock and a hard place. And if you are, great, use that energy and harness it and drive like crazy, okay? But if you're not, you've got to create something because mark these words down, comfort is the enemy of success. Your comfort is the enemy of your success, right? We're too comfortable, therefore we don't do enough, therefore we don't, do, we don't have integrity of word, and if we do, we don't have integrity of action, right? So it's hugely important to, to, to make that point. Okay, so now we're in Tucson, Arizona, and I've got a goal. This is when I started learning about goal setting. So I'm looking at the summer. Now we've got about two months left, okay, to go. And I start going. And, and again, remember, in my young mind, all I knew was failure. That's, that's all I knew. But the third part that, you, that I just talked about is just the integrity of purpose, right? Integrity of purpose. Like when you have that integrity of purpose and it's, and it's clear, you can call it your, you know, your why, you can call it your motivating factor, whatever it is. It's really, if we're genuine in what motivates us, then nobody is ever, what question, is ever gonna question our motives. And the interesting thing is, when you start sharing that integrity of purpose with people, two things happen. Number one, they wanna follow you, because they're like, man, this guy or this gal really wants this, right? And number two, number two, it just gives you just this confidence that, man, I have got to make it happen. I have to make it happen. And, and the discipline that you have, the discipline that you have to create that, to create that discipline feeds other areas of your life as well, okay? So it's usually important to have that integrity of word, action, and then purpose, okay? Now let's talk about integrity of priorities, okay? Integrity of priorities essentially means, you know, you work hard when you're supposed to. And then, then when, when you're with your family, be with your family, right? And others are going to follow that example, by the way. When we put the most important things first, we can actually live more confidently, right? Here's the thing, though. I was out in Tucson, Arizona. I did not have a family, okay? It was just me. And guess what I did, though? I settled into this routine, and we lived in these nice condos, which, by the way, we were paying for. The company wasn't. They didn't put us up there. We were paying for it. And, and there's a pool there, and it's hot. So when there's a pool there, and it's hot, and you're 20-some-odd somethings, what do you do? You hang out of the pool, right? <laughs> and I remember in the morning, like the whole, probably like morning and early evenings, we just hung out of the pool, right? Because it's kind of like you're comfortable, you know, it's like things don't seem real yet. You're like, wow, I really need to create this, like, I depend on me. In our minds, we're like, you're used to doing a job where you get paid per hour and then you go home and you relax. Okay, so this is where integrity of your priorities have got to kick in, right? Because I started thinking, well, what am I doing here? Okay, because these kids I'm pretty sure that I'm with, if they don't make, you know, an income, they're going back to mom and dad and they're being taken care of. I'm not, okay? I don't have a choice. I've got to do something. And so I started looking for clues. I started looking for success clues because success does leave clues. So I started looking and there's this guy. And if you were to look at this guy, you'd say, he's not going to do well here. Okay. He was probably five foot nothing, five foot six, seven, 150 pounds at most. But the guy was just tenacious and I just wanted to be around him. So one time we go into this neighborhood. We, we would go to, from neighborhood to neighborhood. 
and I would take the inside doors and I would take the outside doors, right? And, and, and we would just go and stay together, right? And I remember getting rejected for the 20, 20th time that afternoon. And then I look back, okay, and TJ was on the other side and he was talking to this guy. And this guy must have been six foot five, like 280 pounds, just towering over him. And he's looking down on him. And I can tell TJ is like moving around and talking and he's just getting agitated. And the guy's not moving much. He's just staring down. And you know the platinum presenter pose of like, you know, you put the, the, the hand on the hip. Well, the guy had both hands and he's just looking down on him. Okay. He wasn't posing. He was, he was getting irritated. Okay. And TJ just kept going and going and going. All of a sudden, he grabs him by the collar, lifts him up, okay, and throws him, you know, by, by, you know, throws him by, by the road. And so I run over. And trust me, I didn't run over to, like, fight the guy. I ran over to grab DJ so we can get the heck out of Dodge. Okay. This guy was a big dude. But here's the lesson that I learned, right? You got to be a little bit crazy to do stuff like at being an entrepreneur and being in sales and doing anything like that. Okay. And crazy, not in the sense that you're not mentally crazy, crazy in the sense that you've got to be willing to go against the grain. Now TJ is a bit extreme. Okay. But you got to be willing to go against the grain and you've got to reprogram your mind either with, with personal development or being around people that are kind of like you that want to be the same place and just duplicate what they're doing, right? That's when I started thinking, it's not really crazy. It's thinking way outside of the box. He's doing things that most people are not willing to do. It's living like no one else today so that later on you can live like no one else. And that's exactly what TJ was doing. So the moment I did that, I just started following what TJ was doing. And TJ had a formula, right? He had found his numbers. And his numbers were these. In a day, we need to, number one, we need to optimize our time and we need to talk to people when people are there. So rather than go out first thing at 9 a.m. in the morning, we need to go between 11 a.m. when everybody's back home, okay, and, and 7 p.m., 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. How does that translate to you if you're a coach? Be smart about when you're posting on social media. You guys know that. Go where your people are. Where are your people? And what hours are best to talk to your people, right? Sometimes, and, and here's the other thing. It's not the hours that you have. It's what you do in the hours that you have that make all the difference. And so what we did is, one, we had the hours, and two, we started establishing our numbers. If you don't know your numbers, you need to start looking at your numbers. Our numbers were, we need to knock on 100 doors a day. 100 doors a day to find two yeses. And if we can find two yeses and work and work five to six days a week, at the end of the summer, we'll be set. That was our ratio. That's what we needed to do, right? Sometimes you just got to go through, go through. Now, you know, the nice thing is you don't have to go through, you know, 100 people, you know, you know, to find two yeses. Maybe you do, but that's what we had to do. And guess what, though? The more we did that, because now it became just a numbers game. I wasn't attached to that, no. Like, I learned so much about communication and dealing with just, um, you know, with rejection. That, because I knew it was just a no. It wasn't like, I don't like you. It wasn't a not right. It was sometimes a not right now. And I got so much, like, I got so much better, and I wasn't attached to it, that I started getting better. And my numbers started getting better. And next thing you know, um, as I get better, so do my referrals. They start getting better because I do a really good job with the two people that say yes. I started getting referrals, right? And that's what happens. But, but before you start getting better, the rubber needs to meet the road, right? The rubber has got to meet the road. It's extremely important, right? So integrity of priorities. The last thing is integrity of character. Integrity of character is basically people can trust us to think the best of them, to be imperfect and to not engage in gossip, okay? Integrity of character is people can trust us to think the best of them, to be imperfect, and not engage in gossip. Interestingly, the group of eight had now dwindled down to six, okay? 
One of those two that we lost was this guy. I, I swear he was kind of this all-American guy, you know, good-looking guy. And I was like, and he used to be, um, he was a returned LDS missionary. So LDS missionaries go knocking on doors. That's what they do. So I was like, man, you've got this in the back. You're used to being like rejected, talking about religion and knocking on a hundred doors. So you're going to crush this. Problem is, he, 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 um, he just took it for granted. Um, he, he didn't really invest himself. And he spent a lot of time just talking, talking about other people, talking about different things. And you want, you want to know something that will completely crush, you know, someone or crush a business is just this, just talking, talk, 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 talk with just no intention of doing anything constructive. And I'm sorry, that just does not work. That just does not work, right? And so that guy left, okay? Only the real workers stayed. Now it was six of us from 10 to six. The last one is integrity of character, right? Again, that integrity of character is what actually helped me push and start getting referrals. So now the, 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 you know, the summer was coming to an end. It's time, it was time to go home. Remember, my goal was $3,000. If I did not make $3,000, I already told you what would happen. And guess what? At the end of all those two months, I did not make the $3,000. I didn't make the $3,000. I doubled it. I made $6,000. I made $6,000 in those two months, more than I had ever made in my whole entire life. I just remember like that summer was groundbreaking for me. In those three months, just of, it was both misery and just complete joy. It was both. And that's what entrepreneurship is, right? It's like, whoa, and then what happened, right? It's just kind of how it is. You have to learn how to navigate. You have to learn how to surf the waves and you have to remain as even kill as possible. But in those, I kid you not, in that summer, I learned more about business, about um, humans, about communication, about goal setting, about leadership than I learned in my four years of studying finance at college, right? And guess what? I ended up taking that money and paying my college in advance. I paid two semesters in advance. I ended up doing the fall of 2012, uh, 2002, sorry, the spring of 2002, and then the fall of two. Well, oh, sorry, the spring of 2003 and then the fall of 2003, and I graduated in exactly eight semesters in four years. That was my goal. That's what I wanted to do. And if it had not been for what appeared to be this difficult experience, I would not have been able to graduate. I would not have been able to learn as much as I did, right? So if you're going through something tough, just remember the five integrity quadrants of leadership, integrity of your word, your action, your purpose, your priorities, and your character. And I promise you, if you surround yourself with good people and you put your, your back against the wall and you don't become too comfortable, there's nothing that can stop you. There's absolutely nothing that can stop you. Now, that $3,000 for you watching this could be you want to be elite, you want to be premier, and it seems so far. And that's what it seemed like for me. It seemed just kind of far. It's like, and am I going to make this happen, right? But I guarantee you, if you buckle down and you just focus on winning every single day that you're working your business, there's no question. At the end of this year, December 31st, you're going to look back and be proud of what you did. Whether it's elite, whether it's premier, whether it's two-star, five-star, whether it's paying off some debt, whether it's getting back in shape, I don't care what it is. If you're consistently doing that and you use those five quadrants, some great things are going to happen. Okay, so Jacqueline, that's what I wanted to share. You can stop the recording now. We'll go more into the return and report uh, in the session.